Apologies for the show starting off late today. I'm kind of dealing with a lot right now, so yeah, it's not a bad thing, really. But either way, we have ourselves another episode of the Why I Want series. This is season five, episode 12, I believe, something like that. But we are sticking around in the NHL prospect scene to go over guys that will be drafted in the 2022 NHL entry draft. Last time we talked about a player that you probably heard his name before, Jack Hughes, but it is not the Jack Hughes you are thinking of. Today we're going over another guy that is kind of in that same sort of territory of where they could be taken in the draft where Hughes was seen by a lot of people as a potential late first, maybe early second kind of guy. Today's prospect could be seen in a similar range depending on who you ask, although this player is a lot more interesting to me because of the people that say he should go a lot higher. Today's prospect video was going over Isaac Howard playing out of the US NTGP and who was heading over to the University of Minnesota Duluth Bulldogs for 2022-2023 in the NCAA. Isaac Howard is a 5'10", 183 left-handed left-wing player who was born in Hudson, Wisconsin, USA. If you look at the draft rankings and you see where people are going that are high on Howard, you have guys like TSN and Bob McKenzie who have him at 15th overall. You have Dauber Prospects who have him at 10. The Puck Authority has him at 14th. But the scouting outlets that are a little bit more pessimistic on Isaac Howard really drop his consolidated ranking. Future Considerations had him at 38. Craig Button, so Bob McKenzie's partner, has him at 41. You have Recruit Scouting who has him also at 41. So all things considered, averaging out all the rankings, his consolidated ranking is 25, which makes him more of a late first, early second-ish if you're trying to project where he's going to go. However, when it comes to Isaac Howard and the way he plays, the offensive profile to this guy is really what pushes him up some of these other draft boards by Bob McKenzie and Dauber, etc. Let's go over the production in 54 games played for the NTDP this season. Isaac Howard posted up the most points on the team with 27 goals, 44 assists for 71 total points. He outproduced Logan Cooley, who is the projected second overall pick in this year's draft. And Howard also put on a display yesterday for Team USA at the World Under 18s, where he had five points, four goals, and one assist in the one game played so far. If you're paying attention to the U18s, which are actually going on like right now as this video is being uploaded, you're probably going to see some Isaac Howard stuff and just note how gifted offensively this guy is because that's really the bread and butter as to what makes him a valuable draft prospect. Here are the scouting reports on elite prospects. He is a deceptive shooter, changing the angle on goalies before ripping pucks home. An offensive dynamo, Howard has an instinct for scoring. Now, that doesn't really tell you all too much, so let's go over onto a few other scouting outlets to talk about what it is that Howard does and what he doesn't do. Dauber says that he is a gifted offensive winger with great puck skills and a quick release. He needs to get stronger, but he has top six upside at the NHL level. You have yourselves the hockey writers. This article is pretty good because it collaborates a few quotes. Isaac Howard is one of my favorite prospects in the 2022 class, Austin Broad of Future Considerations says. He's a pure goal-scoring talent on the wing that can deceive goalies with his release, but he's shown that he can be more of a playmaker early on in the season, making him a multi-tooled offensive weapon. Josh Tesler of Smot Scouting says that routinely, Howard keeps an excellent eye on the puck and he aligns his positioning to where the puck is. In addition, he has the speed with crossovers to keep quality pace with his puck-carrying attackers. His vision and speed complement each other nicely, as he is always on the move, attentive, and puts himself in a position where he can be impactful. And that's kind of what we've been seeing over the past few years with Isaac Howard, especially going back to other tournaments. He had the Youth Olympics back in 20, what was it, 2020? But Howard is indeed a really offensive leaning guy. He's really skilled and he's really quick. He's got great scoring and playmaking skills, and he could be a big offensive pickup in the middle of the first round if you're okay with drafting a player who isn't all too perfect with the finer details of effort, decision making, and defensive play. Isaac Howard is not going to be drafted because you want him to be your all-around guy. You want him to play on the boards, you want him to do PK stuff. No, you're drafting Isaac Howard because you want a middle to top six, quick, speedy player who focuses mostly on offense and who can do a lot of good things in the offensive zone. As we have noted, his shooting ability is pretty good, and it's pretty unpredictable as well. He's got a lot of puck angle changing qualities to his game. I mean, the guy's got four goals in one game played at the U18s right now, so there you go. That's kind of a display of his talent already. 
But when it comes to his playmaking, I think this is also an extraordinarily strong aspect of his game. Playing with Frank Nazar III, you had yourselves what was one of the better pairings of passing to playmaking to finishing. Nazar, as we talked about in our scouting report video for him, is one of the better pure finishers in the draft when it comes to just being around the net, shoveling pucks over goalies, and knowing what to do when he's in those scrums. And having Howard and his playmaking setting up Nazar in tight areas in the offensive zone made things really difficult for opposing players. So for me, if you're thinking about drafting Isaac Howard, you kind of have to have some other finishers in your system already because Isaac Howard doesn't really focus too much on the defensive qualities of the game. His transition game going from defense to offense, offense to defense, isn't really the most stable either, although he is the type of guy where if you watch him, you kind of see that he could be that guy. It's just more often than not, he chooses to not get as involved when the puck isn't on his stick or when they're not in the offensive zone. When he doesn't have the puck, though, in the offensive zone, he's good at finding space and he's good at opening himself up in areas. He reads the game well. It's just... There is that extra gear that I think you could say Isaac Howard has, but that he hasn't necessarily achieved yet. This could be a pretty big reason as to why some scouting outlets like Craig Button, for example, have him in the 40s, Bob McKenzie has him in the teens. So Isaac Howard probably does have a top six potential ceiling in the NHL when it comes to his point production, but if you start thinking about playing him in lower levels of lineups because you don't want to give him all of the ice time that a top six guy could have, for example, you could be looking at just a pure offensive, number one power play sort of option that can just facilitate goal scoring and really nice passes in front, but who doesn't really have too much responsibility in other zones of the ice. This is what Smot Scouting says over here when it comes to improvements that Isaac Howard could have for his game. Over the next few years at the University of Minnesota Duluth, writer Josh Tesler says, I would like to see Howard continue to grow his transitional game and work on identifying optimal passing lanes to exploit. But but I do love his ability to generate passes at high danger. At the same time, I just want to see the number of completed dangerous passes go up. So if he can work on identifying optimal lanes to use, you have to imagine that the dangerous passing rates will go up. In addition, I'd also like to see him bolster his shot mechanics. This same scouting report also talks about his speed and his high tempo competitive game. So this is kind of what I talk about when it comes to effort and the ability. You know it's there. You know Isaac Howard can be a really eager-minded transitional and defensive player if he wanted to be. It's just he focuses more on the offensive side of the game, which isn't a bad thing, but there have been players whose stocks have gone down because of a lack of focus in those areas of the game, but who have still had some good NHL careers. Like Arthur Kaliev, for example, is the big one that I think about immediately. 2019 guy, he was supposed to be a first-round talent, and his numbers in the OHL, quite frankly, were that good of, like, a top-five talent. But he went in the second round because of defensive quality issues and attitude engagement issues. So, I'm not going to suggest that Isaac Howard has the same level of media outcry that Arthur Kelly have had, but there are some similar situational elements to this that I think do apply here. So, for Isaac Howard, at the end of the day, he's going to be a pretty good just do-it-all offensively guy. You're going to draft him because you want to see this guy mesh well with the other offensive talents you have in your prospect system. But the question is, where do you start thinking about Isaac Howard? Do you start thinking about him as early as number 10, like Dauber has him? Or do you wait until the 40s, 45-ish range to say, okay, maybe we can start thinking about that Isaac Howard guy now? So let me know in the comments all your thoughts about Isaac Howard and his overall prospect profile. Again, we said he's going over to the University of Minnesota Duluth next season, so there are some pretty good players that are going to be suiting up on that squad. Just go over to the Elite Prospects page over here and see who has already committed. So you have Isaac Howard, Aiden Dubinsky, Jack Smith of the Montreal Canadiens system, but overall this should be a great opportunity for Isaac Howard to see what it's like playing with players that are not as gifted, I guess, as Logan Cooley and Frank Nazar III. So let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. I hope you enjoyed this British Trolls 99. And bye.